Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different for you guys. I really wanted to show you all how I apply makeup onto a model for photography, whether that be a beauty commercial or a skincare ad or a beauty campaign, whatever it may be. These are little tips and tricks I've picked up along the way in my career on many of these kind of jobs that have really helped me out tremendously. Now, even though this video is geared towards those makeup artists looking to achieve that no makeup makeup look on the models for these jobs, this is also a really fantastic tutorial for those of you who prefer that very minimalistic approach to their makeup that's still fresh and the skin is still breathable and flawless, really. So if you want to learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to start, I'm taking the Deep Hydration Face Cream from Fresh Beauty along with a foundation from Anastasia Beverly Hills and I'm putting them both on the back of my hand like so, mixing them together to create a tinted moisturizer. Depending on how much coverage you want, you can mix in more foundation or less. In this case, our beautiful model today, Kelsey, already has the most flawless skin and the most gorgeous freckles, so I don't want to hide those by any means. So by mixing in the moisturizer with a bit of that foundation, it will create the most beautiful glow to the skin while also giving it the slightest amount of coverage. Most people would be kind of shocked by how simple my makeup kit is when I travel to sets. Pretty much everything I bring with me has a multi-use functionality to it. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I could figure out how to turn glitter into a foundation at this point. But really, my kit is quite minimal, especially with foundations. I bring maybe four, five, six different foundations and I'll mix them together to create the perfect shade match. Or I'll mix in pigment creams to change the undertones. But I do like to use buildable foundations that I can build up to be full coverage if I need that but also I could shear it down with moisturizer or an oil, like what I've done today with Kelsey. And I'm being sure to add this pretty much everywhere. Again, not really for the purpose of coverage, but more so for adding luminosity and hydration to the skin. Once I have that tinted moisturizer applied, I'm gonna go in with the She's That Girl Cream Blush from Patrick Ta, and I'm working that into the cheeks with a face brush. I'm taking it kind of high up on the cheekbones for this look. For a very natural look like the one we're creating today, I like working with cream blushes. They blend like a dream, and they really mimic the texture and shine of skin. And you'll notice I use my hands a lot to really work these products into the skin today. The warmth of my fingertips help melt the products into the skin. And sometimes sponges or brushes can remove some of that pigment or the natural oils from the products you apply. But in this case, I want the oils to remain on the skin. I want the skin to look dewy and lush and fresh. So sometimes your hands work the best for blending. I'm also bringing this blush down to the collarbones and shoulders. It's one of my go-to tricks when I do makeup, whether it be for natural glam or a full beat, it doesn't matter to me. I love, love, love blush on the collarbones and shoulders. It just ties in the whole look and literally makes skin look like it's just been sun-kissed. I just love blush in general. Okay, moving on, I'm gonna dip into the Light Bisque Cream Concealer from this Bobbi Brown face palette and apply the smallest amount to the under eye area. This shade concealer has a fair pink undertone to it, so it'll really help cancel out the slight hue of blue I see in her under eyes. But as for this Bobbi Brown palette, I recommend every makeup artist out there have one. I've gone through at least a dozen of them. I'll link it down below, but it has every possible concealer shade you'll ever need in it. Plus, I didn't show it on camera, but it also has a ton of other foundation shades on the other side of the palette. It was probably my first bigger purchase when I started out in makeup and building my kit. I think it's around, I think, around a couple hundred dollars, which for me at the time, just starting out in makeup was a lot of money. I mean, heck, today it's a lot of money to me today. $200 is $200, you know what I'm saying? But it's been worth every penny, I highly recommend. So as you can see, I used a very subtle amount of this, nothing too crazy, and I'm using the same concealer to spot conceal anything I see. Of course, if yourself or your model has blemishes or sunspots, you can use more concealer than I use. 
With the Tantor Contour Cream from Huda Beauty in the shade Light, I'm working this product into the skin with a fluffy face brush. I'm not sure which exact brush this is. It's probably intended for face powder or, or bronzer, but as long as you have something fluffy and diffused, the softer the application will be. And the opposite goes for if you use a more dense brush, the more structured and opaque the pigment will appear on the skin. But at the end of the day, baby, you use whatever brush you want. There are no rules in makeup, but you do you. I personally just really enjoy using softer and less dense brushes to achieve a more natural look. And I'm applying this product onto all the areas of the face that the sun would most naturally hit, including the cheekbones, the chin, the forehead, the nose, and even, again, the shoulders and the collarbones. My intention isn't to change the model's bone structure, but rather to give a little color to the skin that pairs well with the blush that we used earlier. And now with this flawless finish powder in the shade two from Charlotte Tilbury, I'm lightly setting the under eye. Powders and I have a very love-hate relationship. If I use too much, the under eye starts caking up. If I don't use enough, the under eye starts creasing. So it's very back and forth. So I just gotta feel out how much to apply to set the concealer without it caking up. Also for beauty or skincare photography, I probably use the least amount of powder for these types of makeup looks because I want the skin to keep its authentic shine. And it does come down to also the vision the photographer has and the rest of the creative team has, of course. So that's something that we have to keep in mind as makeup artists for these shoots. It's not a one-man show. It's definitely a collaborative effort. Anyways, with this same powder, I'm lately dusting it onto the T-zone. Again, nothing too crazy, just a sweep of it on the skin. And with this Islanding Bronzer from Fenty Beauty, I'm also sweeping this onto the skin with a very light hand. I mean, really, even the amount of product I've used so far is still a bit excessive for this no makeup makeup look. I'm really trying to keep it simple so I, I don't know why <laughs> I don't know why I'm being a little show off I promise I'm trying to not make this complicated because it's really not it's a quick and easy look and regardless of what people may say it does take as much skill to achieve a natural look as it does to achieve a full glam look I promise you that Okay, next up, I'm using the Beyond Liquid Highlighter in the shade OMG from Illamasqua to highlight Kelsey's skin. This is probably my favorite step so far, making this skin super glossy and glass-like. Now, I didn't show it on camera, but what I do with the liquid highlight is I apply some on the back of my hand and mix in the tiniest amount of clear gloss with it. Spread it evenly across my hand, dab the beauty blender in it, and then lightly dab it onto the skin. The small amount of gloss in the liquid highlighter will really give it that extra kick of shine on the skin because you'll have the lights reflecting off of it depending on the lighting setup which brings up what I was mentioning a minute ago to you guys these shoots are a collaborative effort with the makeup artist and the rest of the creative team so one of the first things I do when I get on a set is Frankly, I introduce myself to whoever is handling lighting and find out what the setup is like because honestly as a makeup artist I've learned that if it's to get on anyone's good side, it's the guy who operates lighting because lighting can make or break my makeup look. But besides that, something that has always worked to my advantage is really my curiosity, my curiosity for everything, learning how and why things work a certain way to create the final image. So learning about cameras and lighting and other elements because these all play a factor into how I'm gonna apply the makeup. Where's the key light gonna be? Are there gonna be rim lights or hair lights to frame the subject's face and body? Is it a soft lighting setup or, or is the lighting gonna be harsh? Is there a reflector being used to bounce light back onto the model? Are we working with wind or a, a fan? Because if we are, I can't be putting a red glossy lip on a model if her hair is gonna be flying all over the place. You see where I'm going with this? So I guess what I'm trying to say is, 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 um, the best advice I can give you is to pursue your curiosity, learn and take advantage of all of the information around you so you're better equipped with knowledge to complete the job. And by the way, here I'm just taking a fluffy eyeshadow brush and dusting on some of that Fenty bronzer onto the lids and under eye. Nothing too dramatic, we're keeping it soft and natural. But adding on to what I was just saying, I wanna end that note by mentioning that everything I say or advise Take it with a grain of salt because what's worked for me may not work for you and vice versa. I really just don't want to come off as a know-it-all in these tutorials because 
I know I'm not the best makeup artist in the world. To this day, I'm still learning so many different things. And a lot of those things I learned come from you all. I've been watching the recreations you guys do for my looks here on YouTube. And I always find myself taking something away from your videos. So if there's anyone to really thank here, it's you guys. I think it's pretty awesome. We built our own little community where it's not about being better than another makeup artist or having a chip on our shoulder. It's simply about sharing our knowledge and love for makeup. And if I've done just that with my channel here on YouTube, I feel like I've done my job. Okay, so moving on, I'm taking the 24 hour brow setter from Benefit Cosmetics and running this through the brows. I want the brows to look really natural and fluffy, so I'm not going in with any uh, brow pencils or pomades for this look. With this brow setter, I'm running this upwards through the brows, then I comb it downwards and then upwards again. And what this is doing for me is it's really allowing me to saturate each and every brow hair with the gel before it dries down and locks the brow into the shape I want. P.S. Can we just take a moment to recognize just how dewy and glossy the skin is? Every product and step we've done up until this point has really allowed for the lighting to complement the products and her skin. And while this may be a little too glowy for some people, I take this approach because from my understanding in photography, it's easier to retouch skin to bring down the highlights than it is to add highlights without the skin texture looking unnatural. Next, we're gonna curl her eyelashes using the Kevin Aquan Lash Curler. Oh my goodness. <laughs> my blood pressure right now is skyrocketing just watching this. Some eye shapes, it's a breeze for me, but others like Kelsey's, yeah, I, I wasn't having it, not on this day. So I was like, girl, absolutely not. I need your help on this one. Once that's done, I'm using the Lancome Hypnose Mascara to run through her eyelashes. Now, with these kind of no makeup makeup looks, there's a 50-50 chance I'll use mascara. Even though I love the drama of lashes and all, something is really beautiful to me about having no artificial lashes, no mascara, just a curled lash with maybe, maybe a bit of clear brow gel run through the lashes to give it a more defined look. But I was really afraid you guys get through this whole tutorial and feel like you just wasted 10 minutes of your life because our model looks the very same after the makeup as she did before. So long story short, I opted to add a little glamour using mascara and of course a bright lip using these two liquid lipsticks from Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Strawberry and Spicy. I mean, really, at this point, if I was truly going for a more natural makeup look, I would just finish off with adding a clear chapstick or gloss to the lips and call it a day. But one of my favorite looks to do is inspired by Parisian style makeup, where the skin and eyes are very simple and effortless, and the look is really finished off with a beautiful, bold lip. So that's kind of the direction I'm taking with this. This would also be a typical approach for me to take if this were to be for a beauty campaign, for a lipstick per se, which is perfect because there's really nothing else distracting the viewer from the main product we'd be trying to sell on the ad, which is this lipstick. Now, if this were to be an ad for mascara, I probably wouldn't use a lipstick so bold and distracting. But that's the beauty about this look. There are so many different directions you can take with it, depending on your preference. To bump up this look a little bit, I'm using the MAC Lip Glass to add a coat of clear gloss on top. I'm doing this just to validate really the point I was making a few videos back where I mentioned how much I love a clear gloss. And it's for this exact reason here. There's no sense in me packing every color of lip product and every different kind of finish. If I want a matte lip, I'll leave it as is. If I want a glossy finish, I'll add a top of clear gloss. And just as an extra detail, I'm taking the same Illamasqua liquid highlighter we had used earlier and I'm applying a very small amount of this to the inner corners of the eyes, along with this very center of the lid. This just gives a natural glowy finish to the eyes without it looking overdone. To set the face, I'm using my most favorite smelling setting spray by Huda Beauty called the Glow Coco Hydrating Mist. And I'm spraying this evenly across the face to give it a little extra glow before I follow up with one of my most favorite tricks to use, which is using aerosol sunscreen to give the body that extra glossy finish. Ooh, yeah. And 
there we have it kids. I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.